In this chapter, we're going to try our hand at building a bowling alley. Using an assortment of different modeling techniques, we'll be constructing the alley itself, the bowling ball and pins, we'll add in a few gutters, in addition to throwing in a ball return and scoreboard, giving us pretty much all the essentials we'll need to put our project together. This video will specifically concentrate on creating the bowling pin and ball. Let's get started by first saving our file. Heading to the appropriate chapter in the Working Files folder, I'll save the project as Bowling Alley. OK, let's start by first creating the bowling pin. We'll take our front view full screen. I'll use the Alt-W shortcut to make that activation. Having an image that I'd like to use as a guideline when drawing my curve, I'll head up to the upper left-hand corner of the viewport clicking on Wireframe. From there, I'll choose the command Viewport Background, Configure Viewport Background. I could also choose to use the keyboard shortcut Alt-B. In the dialog, in the upper left-hand area, I'll click on Use Files. Then, down on the bottom right, I'll click on the button that reads Files. This is basically signaling to Max that I'd like to load an image inside my viewport. The picture that I'll use for this example is in Chapter 8 of the Working Files folder. I'll navigate to that location. The image is called Pin Outline. Let's go ahead and select that. On the left-hand side of the dialog, down at the bottom, under Aspect Ratio, I'll change from Match Viewport to Match Bitmap. This will make sure that the image I'm using won't be stretched to the size of the viewport when it's loaded. Above that setting, staying on the left-hand side, I'll also turn on Lock Zoom Pan. OK, once those adjustments have been made, down in the right-hand corner, I'll click on Apply to Active View. I can then click OK. Now, I will need to zoom out a ways on the image. I can do that by rolling my mouse wheel toward me. I might also need to use the Zoom command in the lower right-hand corner of the interface to make my final adjustment. Once I've got the image in place, I can start drawing my line. Starting at the bottom of the image, I'll draw half of the outline of the bowling pin. Now, I'm not so worried about what I'm doing as far as curving the line. At this point, I'm simply trying to set the vertices. Once I have those vertices in place, I'll right-click with my mouse to get out of the command. Then activating the Move tool, I'll slide my line to the right-hand side. With now having a better view of the line, I'll get down to the vertex level. Leaving the two in vertices where they are, I'll window select all the vertices in the middle. Once I have those, I'll right click, then in the menu, choose Smooth. You'll notice that the last segment at the bottom is a little bit curved. Changing to my segment selection, I'll select that segment. Right clicking again in the upper left hand menu, I'll change from Curve to Line. I might also need to level out the two vertices down at the bottom of the curve. OK, once I've done that, I can go ahead and add my lathe modifier. Over in the modifier list, I'll type L. Landing on the lathe modifier, I'll go ahead and click on its name. Staying in the right-hand column in the Align section, I'll click on Min. Once doing that, I'll change the viewport to Shade Mode by typing F3. Let's now move the pin back onto the image and we'll change its wireframe color to a light blue. If I need to make any further adjustments, I can do so by going down to the vertex level on my original line. Not being able to now see the end result, down at the bottom of the modifier stack, I'll activate the Show in Result command. I can now select and move the necessary vertices in reshaping the pin. Now, it doesn't have to be perfect, we're just using the image as an overall guideline. OK, once I've got that, I'll go back to the top of my stack, then hide the image from the background view. I can do that by clicking on Realistic, then Viewport Background, and Solid Color. Noticing that the pivot point for the pen is a little off-center, let's go ahead and center that going into the Hierarchy tab. We'll choose Effect Pivot Only. Then, down in the Alignment section, we'll click on Center to Object. Now, once we've done that, let's go ahead and turn off the Effect Pivot Only button. Having had to draw the pin so big to match our background image, 
we'll now need to scale it down. Let's activate the scale command, then turn on percent snap toggle. You can do that by either clicking on the toolbar icon or simply using the Shift Control P shortcut. Once activated, we'll be able to scale our pin in 10% increments. Okay, let's see what we can do. We'll fill up the gold triangle on the transform gizmo, scaling the bowling pin down to 10%. As you begin to scale, you'll see the percentages down below the timeline. When all three X, Y, and Z values hit 10, you can go ahead and let go of the mouse. OK, let's now center the pen by typing Z, and we'll take our viewport configuration back to four windows with Alt-W. To get all four of our viewports centered, we can now hit Shift-Control-Z. Two more quick adjustments will change the number of segments on our lathe to 35, and we'll name the object Pin. OK, now we can make our bowling ball. Let's start by deselecting the pin and heading over to the Crate column. We'll change back to Primitives, clicking on Sphere. Let's now create a sphere with a radius of around 40 in our front view. Once I have it on the screen, I'll head to the Modify column for a few more adjustments. I'll change the radius to an even 40 and take the segments to 50. I'll also change the object's wireframe color to a light green. Let's now activate the perspective view, taking it full screen. Again, you can use the Alt-W shortcut combo to make the switch. We'll now see if we can't bore out a few holes, two for the fingers and one for the thumb. Let's center the ball by typing Z. I'll then orbit around just a tad to get the pen out of the way. I can do that with the Alt Middle Mouse Wheel combo. OK, now the bowling ball holes are simply going to be spheres that we Boolean out. Back in the command panel, let's return to the sphere creating command. Before making our spheres, let's change their wireframe color to a darker green. Let's now activate the auto grid and we'll create three smaller spheres in line with the bowling ball. Now, the placement is up to you, just imagine where both fingers and the thumb would go. OK, once that's done, we'll turn off the auto grid, then we'll go to the Modify column to make some size adjustments on those three spheres. Let's take each of the three spheres to a radius of 4.5. That'll just make sure that they're all the same size when we bore them out. Now, to make the holes a little deeper, Activate the Scale command, changing over to the local coordinates. Orbiting ourselves around to get into better position, let's now scale each of the three spheres 300% in the one direction. That direction would be Z, the blue stick on the gizmo. Again, watch for the scale values down below the timeline. Once all three spheres have been scaled, go back and select the bowling ball. Once you've done that, back in the Crate column, let's go under Standard Primitives down to Compound Objects. This will give us the opportunity of using the Pro Boolean modeling technique. Let's click on Pro Boolean, then down below in the controls, verify that the operation has been set to subtraction. With that in place, we can click on the Start Picking button, then carefully clicking on all three spheres. Now once you've done that, make sure to go back to the right-hand side, turning off the Start Picking button. Go ahead and orbit around to verify the cuts that you've made. We'll center the objects in the perspective view, then we can save our file using the same bowling alley name. In our next video, we'll create the alley and the gutters.